I welcome you again to, to our meeting. And, and just to pick up from what Philippe was saying, I think being in 21st century and having cholera in the first place, and then on top of it, having people that die of cholera, it's, it's really unacceptable. No? We, cholera is so easy to prevent and so easy to treat. And yet we have thousands and thousands of deaths happening every year. And uh, unfortunately, the, at least the re reported numbers are increasing. The, so the focus of our case management working group is to contribute to the GTFCC ending cholera goals. And our goal of uh, reducing cholera deaths by 90%, unfortunately, I think we are quite far from that goal. The, and so we, we focus on improving clinical management, so trying to prevent uh, mortality by improving case management. So like the really the yeah, identifying high risk groups, trying to improve the, the care. And then really the, the big bulk is improving access to care for patients. And like the, as um, Philip mentioned, the, the problem is access to early care. Really, cholera is so easy to treat, but people die because they don't access care on time. And the care is so easy, you know, it's just ORS, but we, we are unable to get it to people when they need it, at the moment where they need it. Uh, then underlying all this is uh, the data we are having. So the uh, Philippe was mentioning uh, unacceptably high uh, case fatality ratios, but I think actually we have no idea what the case fatality ratios are. And we can't compare them because everyone is reporting cases and that's differently. So the, the very high uh, CRFs from the case fatality ratios from Africa. And in fact, we know that some countries actually don't report cases that are not hospitalized. So un, not severe cases are not reported. The mortality, the deaths are counted together, the community and the hospital deaths. So in fact, the, the CRF that we have actually yeah, doesn't necessarily tell the, the, the true numbers. Then. So we definitely have to work on that and try to uh, improve. Oh, this works, this works. Okay. I, I, just try, I, I would like to show you some of the, well, not so recent, but some of the uh, work that we have been doing in the case management working group in the past years. It's just to show you also maybe not everyone is aware of the tools that are available. And the, so I'll just start with the cholera app. So I don't know if everyone is aware of cholera app, but it's a really nice and very useful tool that uh, can help you in all the uh, pillars of cholera control, but also in the case management with really with calculations and so on. So in case you don't have it yet, please do download it on your phone and have it. Uh, have a look. I, I think it's a, it, it can be a really, really uh, useful uh, help for the, for the responders in the field. Uh, you will find, I mean, you have the, you can just look at it on, on your phone and uh, download it. And then if you go to the GTFCC, GTFCC site, you will also have a link there. And then, uh, we have conducted a couple of years ago, and this she will present the findings of the scoping review, looking at the risk factors for cholera mortality. Uh, and it's been really a fundamental work for the for the working group because I think we have really it, it, this review really highlighted the well the gaps that we have in understanding cholera. We are in the 21st century. We've been treating cholera for hundreds of years, but we have no idea actually about the who the patients are, what are the risk factors for, for mortality. And we do the, and I think the main, one of the key outcomes for me at least was the, the fact that yeah, like we are so bad in reporting uh, the cholera deaths and patients so that we can't actually, yeah, we are unable to learn something useful out of it. Then, then of course, one of the key uh, uh, objectives of the working group is to provide technical guidance. So there's been some uh, new and updated guidance in the last couple of years. So you will find the technical note on treatment of cholera in pregnancy. And we have recently updated the technical note on the use of antibiotics based on the, the, the review I mentioned before, where we included the elderly as a, as a high-risk group for, um, for treatment. Uh, and just a reminder again, if you are not aware, but if you go to the GTFCC uh, website, you will have a resources part where you will find all the technical notes 
uh, together uh, available for case management, but also for the uh, other uh, pillars. The, then there is some ongoing work that we will be presenting in the in today and tomorrow uh, on the guidance for the ORP, so for the oral rehydration points, uh, rehydration in some. We'll, we'll hear more this afternoon. And there's, there is some work on the use of antibiotics ongoing by partners, uh, looking at the different aspects of uh, yeah, how to better, better use antibiotics, both for care, but also for uh, reducing transmission. Uh, there is a lot of work to be done on the data collection. There's been uh, uh, the, the surveillance working group issued the new surveillance guidelines, and we'll hear more about it uh, later this morning. And there has been, uh, I think, also very nice work from WHO on the case reporting form, so trying to collect more detailed uh, patient information to be able to improve care, of course. The, and then as a working group, we have been organizing some webinars throughout the year, like looking a little bit more into the future, looking at you know the, the novel treatments, uh, possibilities that are coming up from the phages, antibody-based products, antidiarrheal drugs. The, uh, there has been quite some challenges for the <laughs> for us. So this is the first meeting since 2019. You know, the, uh, it, it's really, I think it's uh, we are a small group, but it's re it's really different when we meet in person and we can exchange and uh, you know, uh, brainstorm together, uh, challenge each other, and I think it's that's how we can actually advance them. There has been, as mentioned before, large outbreaks uh, in the past few years, which diverted resources from thinking about uh, future and technical guidance into actually saving lives. Them. And then I guess uh, most of you have noticed that maybe in the there is a lot of buzz around cholera in the, uh, lately because there has been such an upsurge of... Uh, of cholera, but case management remains a little bit uh, uh, neglected. So, pillar in, in many terms when it comes to funding uh, for us, <laughs> for example. But I think also in the field, and I think the priorities, the, the importance that case management have and decentralization of care, it, it is just not there when it comes to the uh, emergency response. So, so other uh, preventive strategies are prioritized over case management, which unfortunately results in the unnecessary deaths. Uh, I just wanted to share very briefly the working plan we have shared at the annual meeting as well. It, it really aligns with the, with the focus I have shown you before. So the, it's around three areas of work, uh, increasing access to care, the, so really uh, how to get uh, treatment early to the patients at the community level. Uh, so we, the idea is to review the existing models of care that exist, and we are working on the developing the, the guidance to, of the, to, for the ORPs. The, the, the other pillar is on the improving clinical management. Uh, so we're working on the currently at the, the uh, rehydration in children with severe acute malnutrition. We should be working on the treatment of dehydration in the elderly because we know that's a very complicated uh, and uh, high-risk group. The, and we keep working on the use of antibiotics. And then there is the, the last uh, part is on the improving data collection. The, so I spoke about the, the clinical records, the surveillance, the improved, hopefully, surveillance guidance. And the, the, the one objective we set, but I think we, I'm not sure how much we have advanced, we should really look at the recent outbreaks to take lessons from them. Like, I think we'll, we'll We'll spend tomorrow quite some time uh, discussing together what the possible barriers to access to care are and how we could address them. But really, I think we have an opportunity with the with the large scale outbreaks, with the high mortality, that uh, to to try to document and understand what 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 went wrong and how we could prevent that in future. I guess we are unlikely to find anything uh, new uh, in addition to uh, difficult access, uh, lack of uh, um, supplies and so on, but I think it's important to, to document that. And then just uh, like in the previous slide in this meeting, we would like to address the, these three big topics. So we'll dedicate the day today to, to focus on the, how to reduce mortality with, with, through improved uh, clinical care, and we'll have quite some discussions on the data collection and how to improve that, where your inputs will be most, most welcome. Uh, we'll start by reviewing the, the current uh, 
a little bit the current evidence we have through the scoping review and through, through some uh, examples from the countries, uh, how the data collection actually works. We'll have a session on the, we'll discuss the, the with surveillance working group the, the current recommendations and try to see how to maybe improve uh, what we do and how. We'll speak about in the, a bit later uh, in the afternoon more on the clinical side uh, around children uh, with cholera. The, the, we'll, we'll tackle the, the severe acute malnutrition. We'll have a session on the a really clinical session on assessing the dehydration in the afternoon, which is uh, well a very key aspect. But unfortunately, it seems we are not doing that well there either. The, and then we'll look at some uh, newly developed clinical job aids and tools, and we'll discuss what else would be needed to to, to help the, the the response. And then tomorrow we'll really dedicate the whole day to the increasing access to treatment and the care in the community. So we'll, we'll have some examples from the countries and uh, what is being done and try to understand from there you know, what else we could be doing. We'll discuss together to try to identify barriers to to, for a rapid decentralization of care. Uh, and we'll try to come up with some recommendations. And we'll, yeah, we'll try to validate the ORP guidance that is almost finalized. So that's a bit in the in the big lines. Uh, so with that, I think uh, we can start the meeting. The